Hello and welcome to Triumph Women Beating the Odds. We are in Gulu City, bringing you stories of women who have shattered the glass ceiling and broken free from societal norms. My name is Okello Sharon Nagendwa. Betty Kilama, best known as Mama Freeman in Gulu City, is a top businesswoman who has ventured in multiple businesses, a woman who believes in diversification and not relying on just one source of income, a mother, a wife, and a top businesswoman who was also tried out in different fields by the end of the day, come back to being and concentrating on running her businesses. This is her story. Hi Betty. Hi. How are you? I'm okay and you? I'm happy to be in Gulu. I'm happy to meet you. Yes. Beautiful shop. Uh, you know, wed man weddings, yeah? These are weddings and introductions and all that stuff. Yes, those are the attires we have then. It's a beautiful place. How did this all begin? Let's okay. It became, I got into this business just seeing on how people really struggle mm. to get things and how expensive the materials are. People used to go up to Kampala mm. to think about the beautiful clothes, the new makeups. Mm. So I sat down and began thinking about it. Mm. How can I really bring the, the business closure to them? Yes. And then it happened that I thought of trying it one time. Mm -hmm. I started like being somebody's maid. So we went up to Kampala, we do a lot of shopping. Then I compared, if I'm the one to offer the services, how will I really benefit into that? So, what do you mean you started by being somebody's maid? Yes, you know, always when people go for their introduction, there's this mm. kind of the ladies mm. that they normally... Oh, the maid of honor. The maid of honor. Yes. It wasn't a maid of honor, I was just one of the maids. One of the maids, okay. Yes. So we, we were taken to Kampala to do a lot of shopping. Mm picking our attires on how we shall dress on the day. Yes. So I was really doing such kind of mapping in the business. Mm. So I was having a little bit, little money in my account. And I started thinking, last time we went to Kampala, yes. we were buying beautiful materials for the, for the maids, mm. even for the Magole. As, uh, so we, I, 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 I was picking up their prices. Mm. Then I sat down with my little man. I started with only two million. I brought some good gomas for hires. Only two million. Only and two this million. Is okay. Yes. So when I went to, we came back, and the clothes I picked was used in that day. Mm. So I decided another person came. Can I still use the same gomas? Then I said, yes, I have it. So a piece of gomas was hired at 300,000. Mm. So I started adding on my capital slowly, slowly like yeah. that. Mm. So I went to the person. By that shop, it was in Magoba, in Kampala. Mm. So I went back to the person, he's called Aziz. Mm. Then I told him, I want to open my small shop. A very small man, I have a little money, but how best can you really help me? Yeah. So that I start my business, I bring the service home. Mm. Then I said, Betty, you need to have at least eight million, then you can have a little good what, store. Yeah. And I said, it's okay. So I went with only four million after raising it bit by bit. Mm. By then I was not having all this talk. I used to spread one piece of yes. material in a very big space. Mm. So I started literally like that, like that. He told me not to go back to Kampala. I'd be sending for him yes. order. So I went where people are doing their meetings. I always sit at the back and listen mm. how they are trying to plan for their intro. And I started picking and I go after the meeting because mm. I was having little money. Yes. So when I went to them, I'm also having good materials. Can you come and see the place? So that's how I started drawing people from town, mm. Guru City to this side. You know, here is a little bit far from the center of the city. Yes. So that's how I managed to get all this capital. Then later I went into loan for 8 million. So from there, 
I started bringing good materials. I go to Kampala, I could shop materials, one piece at even 600,000. Mm. So when I come back to Gulu, I can put 800,000 per piece. Yes. So you can calculate in a piece, I can get 150 to 200. Mm. That's how I managed to stock the, the shop. You now there's always a story about independent women. Mm. There's always a story behind it. What has inspired them to start their own businesses and you know and, and just move forward with it and what is yours mine too is a little bit far uh, my story started right from the background where i grew mm. i grew in a family where my father had seven women so by then it was hard for me to get school fees i was studying in Gulu high school so I could only pay a little part of the fees because my mother was also very poor by that time. Mm. So there is some NGO, a man called the late, uh, he was a, a white man from Nacho Hospital. Mm. So he came and started recruiting girls from school. So during holidays, we could go and work for school fees. Yes. Then during school time, it goes to pay for our fees. Mm. So from there, we started learning. We started mm. little baking yes. and doing certain things. So starting business started from there. Mm. I could raise part of my school fees and raise part of my pocket money and meet some necessities from that little baking I was doing. Mm. I could bake like cakes, then I move in town from mm. shop to show yes. so from there the issue of the business have never gone away totally from my mind mm. even if I'm working or I'm doing anything else I will never forget about business so what were you doing before you started this business I am a primary teacher okay yes mm. because uh, it was really very difficult for me to go ahead with my studies yes. so after my O level I joined Guru PTC so from joining Ulu PTC, I finished. Then I was really, uh, it was also another task for me to get a school where I can work, go yes. and teach. Mm. I thought I would be really given government school, but mm. all in vain. So after my, my PTC study, mm. I delivered a child. You so delivered a, a baby. A baby, and that baby grew up, and it was very difficult for me to maintain the baby, uh, to keep up the baby. Again, I started by the roadside. I could what go. What do you mean it was difficult? For difficult. You to I cannot manage all what I should really have to care for the baby. Oh, you can mean, also be clothes. I was not having oh. enough money. Okay. And you know, in town, again, with the, my background, you cannot, you have to care for the health of the child. Mm and some additional feeding apart from breastfeeding. Then I decided to drop the level I was in. Mm. I came again along the roadside. I could go and get cassava. I come by the roadside, even within this place. Yes. Then I slice it again mm. and dip it into what? It's called cassava chips. In, yes. yes. So I, would, I was also selling that. After being a primary teacher, I was doing that. Oh, from, so from, prim, from, from primary teaching, mm -hmm. you decided to sell cassava chips. Again, I went back to my <laughs> small down, business. Down, down, yes. yes. So now, so after you drop cassava mm -hmm. chips, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. So at least from there, I raised some money each and every day. Mm -hmm. I got that through business, I'm fair. I'm better than getting employed somewhere. Mm -hmm. Basing on the level of my what? Education. Yes. So from there again, because I told you earlier on, I was within Lacho Hospital. Mm. We could work during holidays. Working there, sometimes we were taken in the garden, we could lay bricks. Mm. And sometimes we were taken in the wood to clean the what? The, the wood. So I got a little bit of experience again when working in what? Mm. In Lacho, yeah. the main what? Hospital. So when I raised some little money, the man I got married to, said Betty with the kind of life we are in mm. and the money you are supposed to get when you're employed as a primary teacher yes. cannot push us Sustain. anymore mm. so why don't you continue with the what the business mm. so by then the man was not employed but I thank God in few months he got some employment with some NGOs. Mm. So his first salary he gave me and said, what can we do mm. out of this little what? Money. Mm. 
So I told him, this good, a good salary. The first was how much? The one he gave me. Mm. He gave me 600,000. Mm. So I said, this one, I've seen many people opening what drug shop. Yes. And I had a brother who is a medical person. I went to him. Mm. So is it really possible? For me, who has no medical background, mm. to open a clinic. Mm. And my brother told me, but that's a very wise decision. Mm. It is possible. Go and get the form from the Ministry of Health, and then you fill in the form mm. where they are saying who is going to maintain the, or keep the clinic mm. or supervise the clinic. Mm. Just put yourself, you are going to be a director. Mm. Then you go and get somebody who is having a full certificate yes. and then the person will endorse for you the what? The form. I said, that's a good idea. Then he asked me, are you very serious? Then I told him, I've already picked the form. Mm -hmm. So imagine, this is what gender equality, gender, no, gender equality is all about. Let's, let's do gender equality. What is, uh, there's this thing I wanted to mention. Not gender equality, equity. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Wow, Betty. So, this is what gender equity is all about. Working together for a common good. If, say, Betty's husband had not given Betty the startup capital from his first salary for her to start up a drug shop and then blossom in business all round, she would not be here today. But as you heard from her, that business was finally his backup plan when he went unemployed after he had given her the salary. So this is just a lesson to us and all married people out there. Helping each other is the way to go. And we will be right back with more of Betty's story after this break. Hello and welcome back to Triumph. We're still here with Betty in Gulu. Now, Betty's story is like no other. Betty is a top businesswoman in Gulu. Without a, a clinical degree or medical degree, she has a clinic, a drug shop, at the same time running a clothing business. And she's telling us a story about how she started and the challenges that she had to overcome. And this is a lesson to us all, those who want to learn how to start their businesses and how to overcome the challenges that may come along the way. Keep listening in and we will get more of the juice from Betty. So how, huh? Betty? Uh -huh. Yes. Mbele, friend <laughs> Mbele. <Right. laughs> so after when we have opened now, we went to register, we step up a bit yes. from drug shop, mm to clinic, a medical clinic now. Yes. So from there, I started uh, moving closure to some politicians again. Okay. So I've moved with some politicians like Honorable Okot Peter, mm. who is an area MPO of Tochi. Yes. And closure a little bit to know about Mao. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because always, whenever I am, we, I have so many people who always come yes. to my life, mm. sit around me. Yeah. I hope you got so many even here. Yes. Not because of who I am, but it's because of the advice I do give to people. Mm. I always tell people that remain focused. No matter the challenge you are mm. going through, don't think about to be, be educated highly sometimes. Yes. Just be focused. Know your level and accept you at yes. your level. I joined politics. Uh -huh. from being but you wanted to do everything uh -huh. <laughs> so again from being a, a campaign agent of honorable court peter yeah. in the next uh mm. the, the next election mm. 2020 2016 i joined in i got my certificate for all level mm. and then i added with the one for ptc yes. that one gave me an equivalent what mm. certificate for a level. Wow. Do you know what? I, I tried to become a woman member of parliament uh -huh. since I was just too used to the to the Polit community yes. and politics and I like supporting church and a lot of people in the mm. community even paying school fees. I, I have children I could really pay their fees even up to now. Mm. 
So people were telling me, now oh, Betty, why don't you join politics? Then I said, it is okay, because I was having some money already yes. now. I joined politics. So in 2016, I don't know whether people can still remember. I'm the only candidate who was nominated in our absence years because I was just in Mulago Hospital. And imagine out of eight women who contested that year, I was number three without even a campaign. Yes. Because of the love people have yeah. for me. Mm. You come to me, I tell you my story. Why were you in Mulago Hospital? I was taken, I have two stories. Yes. The first story is, the first story was related to poison. Okay. So when I went to the village, I was doing my campaign, somebody gave me water. So after taking the water again, I collapsed. So reaching Gulu Independence, reaching like Gulu Referral, taken to Lacho, I got, they found that all my organs were all expanded. So I was rushed to Molago. And that season was not very far. Then I came back just some few, it was 20, 20 I think it was 2019, that was the time I joined in that politics. Mm. So it was near to 2020, which Elections. was uh, the issue of COVID. Yes. So reaching Lachu, Lachu again tested that is she not having COVID mm. or not? So the first result came, she is positive, mm. COVID. Then the second one, negative. But all in all, I was referred to Molago. Yeah. So I stayed in Molago for three months in intensive care. And that was even the time the nomination took place yes. when I was there. The community never relaxed. Mm. They went ahead and nominated me when I was dying in yeah. what? In Mulago. Yeah. So the challenge I met there again gave me another what? The lesson. I came back, I continued with life. Then I said, I am not going to stop there. Mm. Without politics, without my profession, what else can I do? Keep so me now busy. I have put mm, politics, politics aside. aside. My first profession is a teacher, and I'm about to complete my school. I'm constructing a very big school. <laughs> Where? In Koch. It's not school? far from here, okay. Ongako. Mm. A very big school of 16 classrooms. Wow. I'm only left with the roofing only. Mm. Where I expect, even by the end of this year, mm. I will have completed with the roofing wow. so I bought land with the little money I've saved mm -hmm. since I've left politics I said politics sometimes uh, it's just a waste of time and it takes away it the, takes little even money the you resources have. you yes. have so I said let me join in my profession and construct a school I want when I'm not in this universe anymore mm -hmm. what how will people remember me mm -hmm. that I'm looking for legacy so I've done that construction said I'm not going to stop there yes. what can I do beside that mm. so the construction said I'm going to nurture my child one of my ch yes. my children to join teaching profession the school will be for that child yes. then I'm also taking another one to medicine to medicine to, and to right then now take over the, the cleaning. <laughs> right now he has sat for his uh, senior four mm. he's no more he's in the what in yes. the clinic I have put him as a cashier, managed the cleaning. Yes. So from there, he, he got inspired. He said, no, mommy, let me go and join what? Now, uh, medical school after my results is mm. out. Then said, it is okay. Mm. So I've got somebody who is going to run the clinic if I'm not around. Yes. And then I said, no, one of my daughter like fashions and designs so yes. much. What can I do to leave this child with something to do tomorrow? Mm. And say, let me open this brand shop, shop. Mm. to the to young girls, even in the church. I always tell them, continue with your studies mm. because we don't know what God has planned for us. Yes. But how can you organize yourself without education? Yes. Even without marriage, mm. how can you prepare yourself? Because most women these days they like say, my husband is not helping me, mm. but me. Right now, I've stayed four years. My husband is not working anywhere. He's unemployed. It is unemployed. And he's happy. Yeah, yes. He's happily married at home with you. He's even seated right now in the house. Wow. <laughs> 
but I'm here working for him. The clinic is there. But you go back and cook? What? Why don't I do that? Mm -hmm. I wish you also reach my home and mm -hmm. see. So he's just always there. Even in the morning when I was taking the kids, he said, have you paid their fees? I said, completely. Yes. <laughs> so that's how we also, also help our family to become lovely. Mm -hmm. It is not all about pushing your husband for what he cannot afford. I've also challenged so many women who think when you are in certain level, you cannot be uh, under any control of any man. Yes. But I am not that kind of a woman. Mm. I go home, I serve him, I wash clothes, I do what a woman should do. Wow. Isn't that inspiring? A woman starting her own enterprise and growing it and not only stopping at that but planning for the children planning for the future of of the children and yet fending for her husband available and submissive to her husband at the same time and who said you should have only one business diversification is important but if one fails another comes right in don't forget to join us again next Saturday for more interesting and inspiring stories, just like the one of today where we've been inspired by Betty's story, a top businesswoman in Gulu District. My name is Okello Sharon Nagenjoa, and our socials are Girl from Moyam and Triumph Women UJ.